I decided to pick this next one because it's also a fun slash complicated one. Uh, we're asked to determine what's being oxidized, what's being reduced, and of course to do that we're going to start by signing every single atom on this, uh, or in this uh, reaction an oxidation number. And then we of course look at see who's changed from what to what. Potassium chloride, mm, what is their oxidation number? Well, potassium, if you look at the periodic table, is in column one, which means it wants to lose one electron. So unless it's just potassium all alone, it has an oxidation number of plus one. So I'll write that down here. It stands to reason that chlorine must have a counter oxidation number of minus one, and that also makes sense because chlorine's in column seven. The periodic table wants one electron so that it can go to feeling like the no nearest noble gas. That one's pretty easy. Let's skip this one right uh, for right now and go to O2. O2 is oxygen all by itself or bonded to other oxygen atoms. No charge. What is its oxidation number? Well, yeah, it's totally zero. Let's move over here to the right and knock down the easiest ones here. Chlorine. Cl2 all by itself. Chlorine bonded to another chlorine atom, but there aren't any other atoms around. Uh, no charge. That also has an oxidation number of zero. So those are chlorines in their elemental or zero state. Hydrogen must have an oxidation number of plus one, and that's indeed the case whenever you have hydrogen bonded to another non-metal, at least almost always. Hydro or oxygen, by similar uh, rule I've outlined elsewhere, has an oxidation number of negative two. Now the reason I've got this line here that says overall charge is because sometimes it helps me figure out uh, sort of elements that are in between or confusing. You'll note, for example, here there are two hydrogen uh, atoms, each with an oxidation number of plus one. So together their overall charge is plus two. There are one, there's one oxygen that has an oxidation number of negative two. You add those together, that comes to zero, which is the overall charge for H2O. But the oxidation number for each of those individual hydrogen atoms is plus one. Combined, they yield an overall charge of plus two. Hopefully we're okay with that. Now let's take a look at the hard ones, this HNO3 and the KNO3. Hmm. Well, I'm going to draw HNO3 out a little bit larger so that we can see it. HNO3 looks like this. Oxygen, whenever it's uh, bonded to non-metals, and pretty much everything else except for peroxides, or if you've got O2. If I've got O2 all by itself, that's oxygen, that has an oxidation number of zero. If I've got an oxygen and a peroxide like hydrogen peroxide, that has an oxidation number of negative one. Oxygen, pretty much all other scenarios, has an oxidation number of minus two. So I'm going to go ahead and write down my oxidation number here. I've got oxygen having an oxidation number of minus two. And then I'll write overall charge. You'll notice that there are three oxygen atoms here. Each of them has an oxidation number of negative two. So what's the overall combined negative charge from all three of those together? Yeah, it's negative six. And that's important to keep in mind as we uh, do further analysis here. Hydrogen, if it's all by itself in H2, has an oxidation number of zero. If it's bonded to a metal, then it has an oxidation number of negative one, usually. If it's bonded to a non-metal, it has an oxidation number of positive one, usually. This is one of the latter cases. So I've got hydrogen here with an oxidation number of plus one. There's only one of those hydrogen atoms, so its overall charge is also plus one. What is nitrogen's uh, oxidation number here? Hmm. Well, that one might be a little bit confusing, but we can see that the overall charge for HNO3, there's no charge written up here, so it must be zero. So what that means is that nitrogen has to have an oxidation number such that when I add one, plus one plus x minus six, it gives me zero. What does x come out to be? Well, you're right, it's plus five. And because there's only one nitrogen to give me x, that one nitrogen must have that oxidation number. So nitrogen here has an oxidation number of plus five. So I'll go ahead and go back up here. I'll write down plus one for the hydrogen, plus five for the nitrogen, and minus two for the individual oxida oxidation number for that oxygen. Let's take a closer look here at this KNO3. <clears throat> KNO3 might be similar. It might not, though. The oxidation number for potassium, and this is usually the, the case for most metals, except for metals that are in the D block, is going to be corresponding to whatever column it is in the periodic table. Potassium's in column one, which means it wants to lose one electron to have a plus one charge, and hence a plus one oxidation number. Oxygen, for reasons we talked about up here, has an oxidation number of negative two. There are three of them, so it's going to be negative six. So nitrogen, once again, has to have some value that when added to these, comes out to be zero, because zero is the overall charge for KNO3. That also comes out to be plus five. So here I've got potassium with an oxidation number of plus one. Each of these oxidation or oxygen atoms with an 
oxidation number of negative 2, and this nitrogen with oxidation number of plus 5. Now what we have to do is look left to right and see what has changed. Hmm, I've got potassium here with a plus 1, then that goes to plus 1. That's the same. I've got chlorine going from negative 1 to 0. That's a change, so I'll put a little check mark next to that. That's one of the changers. I've got hydrogen going from plus 1 to, uh, yeah, plus 1 over there. That's the same. Nitrogen going from plus 5 to plus 5. That's the same. Oxygen going from negative 2 to, well, negative 2 over here and negative 2 there. Oxygen here going from 0 to negative 2 and negative 2. That is a change. That's different. So some of these oxygen atoms that started out as having an oxidation state of 0 got incorporated into either the KNO3 or the H2O and, and had some kind of change. And uh, so anyway, there are, there's, a, there's a change. So now that I've figured out which elements have been changed, I have to... Dang it to heck. I have to... to, dis, to now that I've discovered which elements undergo or experience a change, I have to determine which one's been oxidized, which has been reduced. So let's take a look at our two changers. I've got chlorine going from negative 1 to 0. Going from a negative number to 0, I'm becoming more and more positive. How does a chlorine become more and more positive or lose negativity? By losing electrons. So if you lose electrons, I lose electrons to become more positive. I lose electrons, that is oxidation. So this chlorine right here has been oxidized. Now, let's look at this O2. The O2 goes from 0 to negative 2. It's going from 0 to negative 2, so it's becoming more negative. How do you become more negative? By receiving or gaining electrons. They have negative charges. So if I've gained electrons, that is reduction. So this oxygen has been reduced. And that is the answer to the question.